I would like to greet you with my deepest respect and most cordial emotions. And here with your presence, I would like to welcome uh, our guests once again, uh, Mr. Rouhani and Putin, to our country. We have efforts for uh, the establishment of peace in Syria, and we are very proud to be hosting such a summit in our country. Last November, we met in Sochi, and we were hosted by my friend Putin. And since that first summit, important developments have taken place in Syria. Today, we have had discussions which we believe will shed light to the near future, and we have discussed some steps to take. In terms of the escalation zones, as Turkey, we are uh, sensitively fulfilling our responsibilities. In Idlib, a short while ago, we established the eighth observation point, which is an important indication of our commitment in this regard. As for Syria, the following point must be considered by the whole world. The territorial integrity of Syria is only possible when we are at an equal distance to all terror groups, not just in Syria, but in Turkey and other neighboring countries, and actually to the whole region, some terror groups form a threat, and they must be excluded without discriminating. Turkey, with the Euphrates Shield operation, has eliminated 3,000 uh, Daesh terrorists, and Turkey is uh, has carried out the most effective struggle against uh, terror. Also, we have paid the highest price uh, in the face of attacks from Daesh. With the olive branch operation, we have carried out a similar operation against PYD and YPG, who is a similar terror group. In both operations, so far, 4,000 square kilometer area has been uh, cleaned from terrorists and has been rendered safe. We do not only ensure safety in these regions, but we also improve the infrastructure and the superstructure of the areas. Uh, and we make them more livable for our Syrian brothers who are the real owners of the region. As you know, there are 3.5 million Syrian refugees hosted in our country. In Jerablus El Bab, so far 160,000 Syrian brothers and sisters have returned and established a new life for themselves in their homeland. After uh, finishing the scanning for explosives in Afrin and uh, fixing infrastructure, hundreds of thousands of Syrian guests are uh, waiting to return to the region. Tel Farat region is also uh, be made uh, livable for our brothers who will be returning there. And with our Russian and Iranian brothers, we are ready to run a joint work to do this. In Mumbij and all other regions which are controlled by YPG and PYD will be rendered safe and until then we will not uh, stop and I should underline this once again here. <coughs> Distinguished members of the press, our struggle, our fight against PYD and YPG is not uh, is not preventing our fight against Daesh in Syria, but rather complementing it. Uh, Daesh and PYD YPG uh, serve the same purpose, and without this mentality, nobody can serve peace and stability in Syria. If you pay close attention, these two terror groups seem like they are fighting against each other in the field, but actually they always support and pave the way for each other. In Syria, whenever a chaos is in, 
intended, first Daesh is placed in that place, and with the pretense of fighting against it, PYD and YPG is placed in that place in order to complete the cycle of terror. On the other hand, Syria's real heroes, which fight for the future of the country, are always being pressurized or massacred. We want to, we are committed to saving whole Syria and our own borders from this cycle. Without peace in Syria, there can't be peace in Turkey. We have 911,000 kilometers of borders and we have a relations. So the meaning uh, of what is happening in Syria is very special for us. As Turkey, in all operations that we run in Syria, we are doing our best and we have prevented civil losses, civilian losses. In the cities where we are running operations, you don't see the same uh, view uh, as, oppo as opposed to other cities. When you compare the two types of cities, the difference will be understood quite easily. Syrian brothers and sisters in areas where we clean from terrorists are now continuing their lives in peace. On the other hand, uh, regions or places where the terror group is active, there is always a tension and conflict, as obviously seen. Uh, establishing territorial integrity of Syria and preventing uh, bloodshed and rebuilding the future of uh, Syria is an area that we are in agreement on. The losing party is always the people of Syria, and we all know quite well who the winning side is. There is a difficult uh, road ahead of us, but the light is more obvious. The future of Syria and our region cannot be left uh, to a few terror groups. We will not allow this, and as guarantor states, we will not uh, yield uh, to provocation and the games uh, played, and we will uh, march in a committed way towards the targets that we have agreed on. Together with us, uh, the international community has important responsibility as well. So once again, I would like to invite international uh, community to support uh, the uh, struggle, the efforts in Syria. As I conclude my remarks once again, I would like to uh, welcome and express my gratitude for hosting the presidents in my country on behalf of my person and my, my nation. The discussions uh, and the agreements that we have reached, I hope, will uh, be uh, auspicious for our Syrian brothers. I would like to thank my brothers Rouhani and Putin for their efforts, and now I give the floor to uh, Rouhani. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, I thank you, uh, dear Mr. President Erdogan, the President of uh, Republic of Turkey, uh, the government of uh, Republic of Turkey, and uh, Turkish uh, people uh, for their uh, nice hospitality, uh, for their guests from Iran and Russia who are visiting Turkey yesterday and today and are their guests in their country today and yesterday. Our region in the recent years has been suffering an important uh, struggle like terrorism, which is uh, terrorists uh, have been trained from uh, other countries and have been uh, financed from other countries and mobilized from other countries. Terrorists who 
uh, have been uh, selling the oil of Syrian people and the museums, uh, precious museums of Syrian people have been destroyed by them and have been sold in the market by them. Some of superpowers like United States of America uh, wanted uh, the terror groups like Daesh and Al Nusra to be in our region for uh, long years to act like their tools in the region. Big nations like uh, Syria and Iraq with uh, help of, with assistance of uh, other nations uh, has uh, brought these conspiracies to, the, to be failed. And today we do not have a power like named Daesh. Still we have remainings of uh, it, uh, although in the region. Today, uh, after many years, the uh, uh, frustrated people in the region have been have got have gained uh, hope in the region and uh, f since 15 months in Astana we have had meeting and in this meeting the process has been agreed which has uh, the result uh, of ceasefire and uh, decreasing challenges in four regions. In this process, Russia, Turkey, and Iran have had major roles and with having uh, many meetings in different levels, like ministerial levels, we had summit uh, in November last year in Sochi. And one of the fruits of these meetings is uh, holding national conference of uh, Syria with presence of uh, government of Syria and oppos Syrian oppositions in Sochi, which was uh, very fruitful and hope giving process which uh, should be continued ahead. From that time up to the day, now we have had many changes uh, in Syrian atmosphere. Some of them have been good and some of them have been bad events. But we are happy today that in all hope of uh, Syrian people from yesterday in order to be in the peace have been increased and Syrian refugees today, they have hope uh, with regard to have peaceful life in their homes more than before. And now I'm glad today that uh, the summit of Syria, uh, summit of uh, Russia, Iran and Turkey uh, are meeting today in Ankara and in our meetings, in triatral meet meetings, we have had very fruitful decisions for the future of uh, Syria. We discussed about it. And the most happiness uh, happened for me when we, as three countries, we agreed on uh, assistance of humanitarian assistance to oppressed people of uh, Syria and to save the lives of Syrian injures. And this was a very nice uh, second that I experienced in these meetings. And I hope in, uh, in the ground also, we will have uh, this experience to be done. And in order to serve Syrian people, especially for the Syrian people who need help today. From the point of view of Islamic Republic of Iran, that we have had repeatedly stated several times, Syrian challenge has not uh, military 
solution and it has political solution and we have to help together in order to have ceasefire and peaceful uh, solution for Syrian problem and Syrian oppressed people to co go back to their homes. Today in Syria, humanitarian lives and situations are awful and we have to help together in order to bring peace to the lives of people in Syria. We emphasize that Syrian integrity and national integrity and unity of the Syrian land and Syrian independence are the most important aims that should be noticed by everybody, which is uh, what the Syrian uh, people want. Continuation of uh, combat against terrorism and uh, to throw out the remaining parts of terrorist groups in Syria. And what we have to do is to help Syrian future. No country has no right to decide for Syrian people and for the future of Syria. And future of Syria belongs to Syrian people, and it is Syrian people who should decide for reforming on their constitutional law and taking part into referendum in Syria in order to decide for their future. We, uh, three countries who guarantee uh, process, a uh, peace process of Astana, we will continue our efforts in order to bring peace to Syria. And the happy day in Syria is the day that we will bring peaceful life for Syrian people and terrorists have been removed from Syria. And Syrian gateways will be open for refugees to come back to their homes to take part in free election in order to decide for their future. Once more, I thank you, dear Mr. Erdogan, as host of this summit and Mr. President Putin, esteemed president of Russia, I thank them for this summit and for good decisions have made by them and by us in this summit. And I hope our efforts will reach to uh, the results have been uh, decided in these meetings, inshallah, God willing. Thank you. This has this has been a very uh, comprehensive uh, press meeting, a uh, press uh, rem press remarks. Now I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Putin. Distinguished President Erdogan, President of Iran, and ladies and gentlemen, our negotiations, trilateral negotiations, were very constructive and businesslike. We have looked at the main aspects of the situation in Syria and exchanged opinions about the next steps in terms of long-term normalization of peace building. We have reached significant agreements that reflect common statements made during the meetings. This document emphasizes the deep commitment of Russia, Iran, and Turkey to uh, strengthen the sovereignty and territorial integrity and independence of the Syrian Republic, which my colleagues have just stated before. This principal position is especially significant today against the background of efforts to worsen the religious and ethnic disagreements in the region and to preserve the conflict potential in the region for many years ahead. We have agreed to expand the entire range of trilateral collaboration 
within Syria, especially within the framework of the Astana process, which has repeatedly proven its effectiveness. Thanks to the close cooperation of Russia, Turkey, and Iran, the level of violence in Syria has considerably decreased, and Daesh forces have been destroyed, and other terrorist forces have been significantly reduced. Uh, refugees, internally displaced people, are moving back to their uh, places, and the infrastructure is being restored. A priority within the Astana process is political regulation of the Syrian conflict, specifically promoting an inclusive Syrian dialogue according to um, the resolution of the UN Security Council. In this connection, we place special importance on the Syrian National Dialogue Congress, to which there is no alternative today. With my Iranian and Turkish colleagues, we have discussed steps to uh, also implement the Sochi Forum decisions, particularly working within the agents of the United Nations, a constructive dialogue which would enable Syrians to independently determine the parameters of their state building. And an important place in our discussion was uh, devoted to the humanitarian topics. And we have emphasized that it is impossible and not recommended to politicize this topic, especially within the framework of the UN resolution that is aimed to reduce the suffering of civilian populations across Syria. And we have also emphasized Russia's efforts in this regard, especially in Eastern Ghouta, um operation to save thousands of peaceful civilians, to remove fighters from uh, those combat zones. And the combat zones continually receive humanitarian help thanks to uh, contributions of Russia's citizens. For example, seven tons of foods and essential supplies have been sent to Syria last month thanks to a contribution of Russia's religious organizations. And we are also working to make sure that there is a practical contribution to resolving these pro problems, especially the working group uh, that was established on March 15th to uh, bury uh, uh, those who have been killed in the conflict and uh, other communitarian areas of work. We have also spoken about post-conflict rehabilitation of Syria, more specifically social and infrastructure construction. Russian companies are already participating in this, and some projects are now being implemented in areas where hostilities happened very recently. And terrorists continue their efforts to destabilize the situation, and they try to um, counteract the peace process using any possible means. For example, we have proof of uh, these individuals preparing provocations using uh, poisonous agents and we are going to coordinate anti-terrorist operations and exchange information. And in conclusion, I would like to thank all our colleagues, all my colleagues, um, President Rouhani and President Erdogan, for the constructive negotiation. And I'm confident that as a result of the summit, we will take practical measures, and the outcomes are going to contribute to continued practical work to establish peace and stability in Syria. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, myself and the Russian delegation have been in Turkey for two days. In the first day, we had bilateral uh, discussions as part of the official visit. The official visit was very successful, and I would like to thank our Turkish friends and President Erdogan for organizing our work in these two days. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Putin. Yesterday, as you know, the Mersin Akuyu nuclear 
power plant. The foundations of the power plant were laid, and we did the ceremony from here together. The cost is close to $21 billion, the overall investment in this nuclear power plant. And hopefully, by the centennial of our republic, by 2023, it will be completed. And so far, uh, the efforts have begun, construction has begun. The engineers who will work there, who will be employed there in the future, are now being trained in Russia. And as they're trained there, they come back to Turkey. And today we worked on the trilateral summit. And in this trilateral summit, our wish, our effort is for a Syria where peace prevails to rebuild and uh, give new life to Syria. We are here together with our NGOs and in the field. We have invested $31 billion in, for instance, container towns or tent cities. Now in Syria, in northern Syria, uh, some of our citizens, for instance, in Jerablus, Rai, Elbab, in that uh, 2,000 square kilometer area, 160,000 uh, guests have been have returned, and they're they're taken care by us in the region. And for all that, at the moment. European Union committed us a certain amount and the commitment was 3 billion euros, not what we received, but what was committed to us. But not all of that amount has reached relevant organizations, but whether we receive it or not, we continue, will continue making our investment there because we feel it's our duty and the cooperation uh, in the Afrin operation, for instance, with the Russian Federation is very important to me and similarly with Iran, our colleagues at the ministerial level or at the chief of staff level or our intelligence organizations are working in close cooperation and in great uh, joint effort. And I believe as we do this, the uh, infrastructure for peace will be laid there. The first was held in Sochi, the second uh, being here, and the third hopefully will be in Tehran. After a date is set, uh, we will hopefully together prepare for a Tehran summit. So now, first our guests, both Iran and Russia, and, and Turkish media, uh, from uh, all three medias, will have two questions each, and will try to answer uh, those questions. The first, who is going to moderate? The first question. Vital Pitlevoy from the Demos newspaper. I have a question regarding the fact that many times we've spoken about the necessity of a political peace process. Uh, my question is about the peace uh, economical process. Recently, at the start of this year, Russia has signed a roadmap for building uh, construction and energy infrastructure. Are there any steps that are being taken in Syria today by these countries? Can I please speak up? I was speaking about the roadmap that was signed early this year on energy issues in Russia. My question is, are, you, are the participants taking steps along these lines currently in Syria? 
I did not really understand your question. You asked about economic rehabilitation. Of course, that is the biggest issue of them all. In addition to economic regulation, it is necessary that people live uh, under normal conditions without significant investments from the outside, that would be impossible. So this is why we encourage all countries of the world to be active uh, in practice, uh, not only verbally, because everybody is talking about humanitarian aid, but practically nobody is doing anything except Iran or Turkey. Uh, we see some supplies along uh, the lines of the United Nations efforts, but that is not sufficient. And most certainly, we need to participate in this joint effort to rehabilitate Syria's economy and infrastructure. And we hope that once political processes are completed, this rehabilitation work in Syria's economy will become more wide scaled. The second question from the Russian, uh, Russian journalist. Alexander Ganeshev, Life. I apologize, this is not so much on the topic of today's meeting, but it's on the international agenda that my question is like. Yesterday you spoke about the Skripal affair, and yesterday your representative, uh, Mr. Putin, said that England would have to apologize. What kind of apologies are we expecting? Uh, that they made a mistake, or is it an official paper on restoring um, cooperation. We are not expecting anything, but we expect common sense to triumph and that international relations will not be damaged um, to the extent that we are seeing recently. This concerns not only uh, the Skripal affair, but also all other aspects of international relations. We need to work within the framework of healthy political processes based on fundamental norms of international law, and then the situation around the world will become more stable and uh, will be easier to forecast. Now I give the floor to our colleagues from Iran. Uh, Benim adım Ahavan, İran resmi televizyondan geliyorum. İran İslam Cumhuriyeti, Rusya ve İran İran Türk İran Türkiye and Russia with their peaceful acts in order to bring peace to the Syria, but we face United States and Israel's efforts in order to bring war to the region. What is the, pro what is the uh, process that Turkish and Iranian governments are going to uh, have in order to face these sort of problems in the region? I'm from Iranian National Television. What we have faced, uh, United States of America and the government of Israel has not have uh, success in this process and Within the recent years, uh, they, ha they, they wanted uh, to uh, fail the Damascus government to bring terrorists uh, to the region and in order to bring instability for the region, in order to fulfill their uh, aims. Uh, up to today, we have had so many problems in Syria, and for Syrian people, they have been faced many problems, uh, but uh, we see that they have been unsuccessful. Iranian government, from the beginning of the events in Syria, have believed that we have to face terrorism and combat terrorism in the region and uh, to cooperate with the governments in the region in order to combat the terrorism and to help and assist them uh, to uh, not in order not to have changes uh, within the geographical map in the region and also opinion of people uh, should make the future of the uh, countries in the region and this is the process that we are 
dealing with, and we hope that enemies uh, of the region will not be succeeded uh, in order to keep terrorists in the region. And we are trying in this regard, and in near future, we will uh, see a non-armed and uh, peaceful region in Syria with the help of uh, uh, these three uh, countries that have met in this summit and other uh, governments of the region. A must for us. And Excuse me. Somebody's actions, uh, the divisions that they planned outside Syria, do not mean anything for us. They're not valid for us. We do not uh, view these positively because these lands have paid the price for this in the f in the past. But with that, terror uses that as an opportunity to make uh, attacks to our country from Syria. And we never uh, can accept uh, this because here there is no second country which is in the same position as us. With 911,000 kilometers, we share borders with Syria. So all attacks, all abuses have been towards our country and they haven't uh, stopped and more than 100 missiles have been sent and more than 100 uh, of our uh, citizens have uh, died and uh, we show patience but at a, a certain level we say enough and after that we against this, uh, these terrorists, first in Jarablus and then, as you know, with the olive branch operation we uh, carry out, we had to carry out the operation in the region. And at the moment, Jarablus, Elbab and Rai and the 2,000 square kilometer area here uh, has seen 160,000 people returning. And we are working on the infrastructure there and in tents and uh, containers. The uh, people who used to live in tent cities and container cities have uh, started going back. The same is going to happen for Afrin as well. Uh, our friends and brothers from Afrin who have been living in tents will be, hopefully, uh, will be able to go back to their homeland and we will be uh, readying uh, the place for them. But we want this to be known that this is a building a movement and a movement of giving life. And as we carry out this building or this construction movement, Russia and Iran in the region as the guarantors of the Astana process have begun, have begun a process in Sochi and with Turkey and with Tehran we will maintain the process in uh, committed steps and we never offered Astana as an alternative to Geneva. It's a complementary process. Some people still uh, try to portray it as an alternative to Geneva and we have nothing to say against them. What matters for us is to get is to get results and wherever we can get those results we take the necessary steps because we have to we have no patience for being stalled because people are dying uh, for instance in eastern Ghouta you saw what happened and the babies how they are killed immercilessly uh, as we saw and after witnessing all of that uh, nobody for instance when I take a six-month-old baby, I feel uh, emotional because I'm a father. I'm also the president of the Republic of Turkey. In order to uh, stand uh, against that, uh, you sh in order to not be emotional, you should not be human. Thank you. I thank you, uh, dear President, so especially President of Islamic Republic of Iran. Before the summit start, uh, uh, 
Americans have been announced that they will um, leave, uh, leave Syria. And uh, considering this act that the presence of the uh, United States of America in the Syria uh, influences uh, in these meet, uh, meetings and this summit. Uh, so I, I want to ask uh, all three presidents' opinion about the presence of uh, American forces in the Syria and their opinion about it. Americans, uh, every day they change opinions and they talk about something and they change their opinions and so we cannot trust an Americans and their words are not trustable, you see, in the international community and they change their colors uh, uh, day by day, they change and their words are not trustable. First they talked about leaving Turkey and they said that we do not want to remain in uh, in Syria, then they uh, we found out that they asked the Arab countries to get money from them in order to stay in Syria. It means that they want money, and they need money, and they want money from Arab governments of the region, what we see in the area, and they want to get money and stay there. Seven billion. Dollars. Let me let me reiterate. Is seven trillion dollars? Uh, such an amount of money has been spent there, has been invested, and that uh, must be uh, given. Is said, but uh, and that would probably uh, make the process easier. Now we shift to the Turkish media. Lami Ayhan from A News. First. I'd like to ask our guest, Mr. Putin and Rouhani. Turkey has been hosting Syrian uh, refugees, uh, just like our uh, fellow countrymen. There are some uh, promises made by Europe to Turkey, and those commitments uh, haven't been fulfilled yet. What do you think about that? And the second question is to uh, Turkish president. Uh, Mr. Putin said that you have some new suggestions. What were those suggestions? Thank you. As regards implementation or non-implementation of any participants of the international scene of their promises, you have to ask them. We try to keep all our promises, and if we are unable to do that, we explain why something is not uh, being implemented and when we expect to implement it. Turkey is carrying a very large burden. Uh, with regard to the inflow of refugees from Syria. And uh, this is a very unique situation. Uh, many countries also are under a burden of refugees, especially from Palestine. Russia has is experiencing an inflow of refugees from Ukraine. We have to resolve conflicts, so then we will not have refugees. And this is why today we uh, met together, the three of us, to resolve the Syrian problem. And we hope that we will see our work bring positive results. As for the proposal of President Erdogan, the proposal is to strengthen work along humanitarian lines, especially in terms of uniting efforts to give help to an aid to those individuals who need it in escalation zones and across the country and to use our medical services, medical um, military medical services, and we will have to look at the practical aspects of this. Uh, this proposal, I believe, is very timely, and it is also right. And uh, Iranian President Mr. Rouhani is also supporting that, and we uh, most certainly will move in this direction. To protect the refugees in Syria in this uh, uh, situation that we are, it is a very uh, humanitarian duty. And for us as Muslims, uh, is a religious duty, an Islamic duty also. I 
uh, thank all countries who have helped and protected Syrian refugees. I thank you. And thank you them, uh, especially Turkey, Republic of Turkey, which has uh, carried uh, a very large burden. Uh, maybe in Iran, uh, we, we can understand better than others uh, the issue of refugees, and we know that this burden, how heavy is this burden, because 39 years in Iran, we have had uh, more than 3 million uh, Afghan refugees who are living in our country, and we can understand this meaning very good. And in the recent uh, year, uh, 400,000 uh, uh, Afghan children have been trained in our uh, schools uh, free of charge in our uh, country, and uh, we so uh, understand this duty and in, in, in the imposed war against Iran uh, and uh, also in the imposed war ag against Kuwait, also we hosted uh, Iraqi refugees also. So we understand uh, this duty and it is a very important uh, duty and European country also should help and if they have given words also, they f should fulfill their words also. As Mr. Putin and Mr. Rouhani uh, expressed about what has been done, what could be done or what should be done, let me make an addition uh, or let, let me elaborate at the moment, uh, near Tel Abyad, uh, for uh, those coming from East Ghouta, uh, for doing something for those people, at this point, we have rapidly, uh, through our armed forces, in cooperation with Russian armed uh, forces, uh, in the field, they have established an infirmary, a hospital, and the first uh, aid was uh, supplied, uh, will be supplied for those people. Also, large uh, scale uh, ovens in order to supply bread uh, for the region. And that uh, could have been installed already, I think. And in that oven, uh, we will, uh, by supplying the bread needed, to especially the refugees there, uh, we can make this help uh, to the people there. But what I should uh, really underline uh, for my friend Putin or for my uh, friend Rouhani, my suggestion, my offer, which I delivered before as well to international community, which is in the safe zone, either in on our side or in the uh, northern Syrian side, in the safe zone, uh, we should uh, build housing. And by building, uh, by constructing that housing, we can save those people from tents and from container cities. We uh, can ensure those uh, places as safe zones and people should be saved from those life conditions and they should live in, for instance, 500 square meter land. Uh, we can build housing for them in the local architecture and they can work the land in that area and uh, help themselves, uh, help sustain themselves. So that with this step, we can maybe r return them to your normal, uh, their regular lives. Some countries have some promises, but we are at an important uh, point of the process. If we can take such a step together, uh, I believe uh, this will be an important, this will create an important synergy for Syrian people and will help them. Thank you. Uh, from 24 Amateur Solo. At every opportunity, you express your commitment. Uh, should we expect new operations towards terror groups and uh, the, at the leadership summit, did you have the opportunity to discuss such possible operations? Uh, 
distinguished colleagues, the fight against the terrorists or against terror groups is not something that you time. Terror, uh, wherever it exists, should be uh, crushed. The moment it is eliminated, uh, you have peace and uh, any problem is therefore eliminated. And in, we live in a, uh, you live in a happy and peaceful society, but wherever uh, there is terror or wherever there are terrorists, of course, the duty of the state is to uh, fight against it with all its security forces. So Turkey, both inside and on the other side of the border, has an issue uh, of fight against terror and will continue on our journey until that problem is over. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.